My name is Dr. Renault from Shawnee State University, and this video goes along with Chapter 8 entitled E-Commerce with our BUIS 1010 Introduction Information Systems course. I'll be taking you through this video lecture, and uh, just hang on, it's going to be a fun one. This video is entitled E-Commerce, but I wanted to throw out some definitions and talk about e-commerce and 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 e-business and, and the difference e-business is basically buying and selling using computers and digital communications it's virtually any kind of business that um, that you can do including e-commerce it's kind of a superset of e-commerce that includes EDI and lots of other things e-commerce is buying and selling using the internet or the web it kind of adds to the traditional brick-and-mortar potentially or replaces e-commerce can be used for goods services consulting for customer support for publishing for education for so many different kinds of activities now there's a concept that you've probably seen in some of your other business courses called the value chain and we can think of that as the as a good or service moving through the economy and each time it's handled um, hopefully we're adding value or cost to the product in most organizations inbound logistics operations warehousing it um, shipping it um, inventorying it outbound logistics getting it out the door to the customer um, whether that be with a store or whether that be with with a shipping company or whatever or delivery there's marketing and sales that also adds value to the products in your inventory and customer service adds value to your products or adds cost to your products and in inventory um, you know the internet in hopefully increases speed and communication between you and your customers you and your vendors um, also hopefully it decreases costs because you're not operating as large or you're not operating at all a brick-and-mortar um, retail location maybe you have fewer employees maybe you're not using the mail but you're using email there are all kinds of things that that hopefully e-commerce and e-business will reduce a business cost now not always because you've got to invest in it but um, that's that's what we're hoping for here so let's go into a few more of those advantages and disadvantages to e-commerce some advantages are um, hopefully our e-commerce system will develop a better relationship with our suppliers and our customers it creates something we call price transparency where your customers are absolutely aware of what the price is going to be delivered to their door and they can compare your prices to your competitors prices now that can be good that can be bad um, e-commerce will, will hopefully create more of a 24 7 round the clock business that's accessible to customers when they want it not when you necessarily want um, e-commerce hopefully will will allow us to go more global will allow us to leave our small regional brick-and-mortar store our small local brick-and-mortar store and, and glow national global um, we're gonna collect a lot more customer data we're gonna collect time spent on the website what they're clicking on what they're looking at what uh, so, so we're gonna learn a lot more about our customers um, hopefully we can increase our social uh, enroll uh, social involvement with our customers and increase uh, customer involvement better service hopefully that that will be able to respond more quickly to a customer's needs it's flexible if if it's done right your return on investment will increase so so your investment will will come back larger um, if, if e-commerce is done correctly and and you know personalization stop and think about when you go to your favorite e-commerce website I'm not going to mention any by name right now but but stop and think that it's always popping up with suggestions for you um, and and trying to trying to help you find the best product and often 
it knows more what I want than, than I do at times. And hopefully e-commerce reduces your overhead of administration and your overall transaction costs. Now, disadvantages of e-commerce are you got to have the bandwidth. And for those customers behind the digital divide or living without good connectivity or without devices, they're, as, they're, they're out of luck. Um, security and privacy are another disadvantage potentially to e-commerce. You are going to have to spend a significant amount of money on securing your systems and making sure that, that the customer data you have and have collected is kept private. Accessibility is also another issue with with e-commerce. Um, your websites have to be accessible to people with with sight difficulties, people with hearing difficulties, even people with cognitive difficulties, because they still need stuff, don't they? And then general acceptance of e-commerce. Now. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, that was a significant hurdle to overcome, but even seniors and just about everybody in, in, the, in the country at least, and a lot of people in the world, have gotten over that acceptance hump and just come to the, come to the, the realization, come to the overall feeling that, eh, we'll go ahead and use e-commerce. So, so, but you still have individuals that are fighting the acceptance of, of going online going to an e-commerce site. E-commerce is so much more than just selling products and goods and services to a customer. E-commerce is so much more than just being a merchant, selling something, something you've had produced, you produced, or is sitting in your warehouse or store. Um, even though that's kind of what we think about when we think of e-commerce, we think about the whole merchant model. There's also an idea called the brokerage model. And a brokerage basically is um, you run an e-commerce website, but instead of you getting the uh, profit from the sale, you get a commission for the sale. So maybe you're setting up a dropship a website using one of those, those dropship companies. Maybe you're reselling a product that somebody else is actually going to service and ship and you just get a cut. So I mean that would be a business model, a brokerage model. There's the advertising model where you uh, present or provide free content and it's ad supported where you want them to click on the ad link so you get uh, fractions of cents for every ad delivered. Well that's an e-commerce site because you're getting advertising money. There's the um, the, the whole idea of, of mixing more than one source, and I probably should have put that down at the bottom. There's an idea of being an infomediary. An infomediary collects information and data from multiple services, distills it, changes it, tweaks it, and then resells it to other, other entities. So an infomediary doesn't sell a product. Well, they do. They, they sell data. But it's, it's a product they can sell over and over and over and over again. It doesn't diminish its, quantity, its quality. Um, there's the idea of subscription websites, where, where you may subscribe to a site to be able to use it or to get the content from it. Um, uh, Audible sells, for instance, a subscription to unlimited ebooks if if that's what you want to do. So that would be a, a subscription site. There are lots of people um, and lots of, of organizations out there, and I'm not going to mention them because most some of them are are a little risque. Um, but but Patreon. M my wife is a, a Patreon subscriber to a, a couple of, of podcasts where she gets perks, she gets extra benefits because she sends them couple of dollars a month. Um, I mean, it's kind of a kind of a neat way to create a, a a business model. Well, we'll just have people subscribe, and and another business model that wasn't really mentioned in the in the PowerPoint or the book that I saw is the idea of the donation or gift model. Um, the uh, basic two fifty six site or 
or the the textbook I use for my Python site if you go to the website if you want um, to donate you can and if you don't use it anyway uh, kind of like freeware or donationware or or buy me a beerware or buy me a cup of coffeeware so so th that's another business model and are there other business models that I didn't cover probably and, and if you can think of some I'd love to possibly add them to this slide for next time so we've talked about the different models of how e-commerce sites get money or have earnings but let's also talk about some categories of biz, of e-commerce sites. And uh, this is an alphabet soup kind of thing, but the alphabet makes a whole lot of sense once you know it. B to C stands for business to consumer. B to B stands for business to business. So those are the two most common kind of, of uh, e-commerce websites. A business to consumer is a business selling to somebody and a business to business website are businesses selling to businesses instead of end users so business to consumer websites can be thought of as either a multi-channel a cross-channel or an omni-channel site a multi-channel site is or a multi-channel business to business business is uh, where you have multiple channels maybe you have a, a website where you sell things on the web and you have a store where you sell things and and maybe you sell um, some through social media and maybe you sell some through through a mobile app or mobile marketplace so each of those channels kind of exist on their own and compete against each other um, not really because it's all the same business trying to sell the same thing but if a customer buys over here they're probably not going to go over here and, and you're not um, really trying to cross your channels you you're an e-commerce customer you're a face-to-face -face customer you're a social customer um, a cross-channel business to customer uh, model uh, category is uh, kind of the idea of web to store or store to delivery kind of things how how many stores and how many retailers and how many e-commerce sites are, are are kind of embracing this multi-channel kind of kind of uh, uh, sales system where you where you can go online and order a product and it's shipped to a store well what they're hoping is when you go to the store to pick it up you're going to pick up some other things um, so you see how we're, we're, we're thinking cross-channel here and then the omni-channel is where the entire organization and the entire business to customer relationship is fully integrated social mobile web store um, and a customer has a, a seamless experience between all of them this is going to really be the future of, of, of commerce and in, in my opinion this is where a lot of it's gonna go because because a lot of us don't want to give up a store a lot of us don't um, a business to business is uh, just exactly what it sounds like b2b where we're using electronic data interchange that was talked about in a previous lecture we're talking about electronics fun, electronic funds transfer EFT to move money back and forth between businesses and usually these are done with a type of marketplace now is it a seller marketplace where the seller creates the the website and tries to sell to other businesses is it a buyer side marketplace where the buyer puts up a website saying we're buying a million dollars worth of this and we're buying a hundred thousand of this and we're buying all of this and we're buying this and we're buying this and we're buying an airplane and we're buying a steamship and we're buying all these things make us bids tell us what you want to sell well isn't that kind of a buyer side marketplace where the buyer buyer creates the marketplace and then lastly there's a marketplace like a third party marketplace like um, uh, Alibaba and and some of uh, and, and some of the others where where they don't sell ones they don't sell two or three they'll sell you a shipping container full of this and that's between 
a, a manufacturer that lists it there and buyers that then go there and list. And so it's a third par party marketplace working on the business to business relationships and transactions. That's kind of cool stuff. Um, C to C and C to B, same letters, just switch them around customer to business and customer to customer, website, customer to customer, e commerce. You know, you can think of some of what's on eBay or Etsy to be C to C, customer to customer, where I create something, I put it out on the website, it then sells to a customer, and, and it's a relationship directly between two customers. Now, there's an intermediary in the middle, but um, customer to business would, you can just imagine a customer going back to selling back to a business well if a customer is selling back to a business then the customer is really a business so it's a b2b but it's a small b2b so um some of these kind of kind of have have fuzzy edges but but it's still kind of an interesting thing to stop and think about the different kinds of categories of e-commerce there's also the letter g which uh, we're going to throw in for government so government to customer, government to consumer, government to business, and government to government, e-commerce. For instance, you can go to the Internal Revenue Services website, type in your tax information, and they will automatically EFT your, your tax refund, if you're getting one, right into your bank account. So that would be government to customer. Um, government to business would be like online tax filings, um, online regulatory filings, um, all of those kinds of things. And then government to government, remember, the federal government talks to state governments, talks to local governments, talks to county governments. So, so there's, there's certainly um, things that have to be done, relationships, filings, monies, and such that have to go between different governmental entities. Another category of e-commerce would be educational e-commerce and I abbreviated that edu because that's the dot on the end of the domain for education but schools and education you're, you're doing it right here um, maybe taking a course online or student records online or paying your bills online all e-commerce and then stop and think about all of the e-commerce that doesn't fall in those categories but falls into nonprofits, political uh, political organizations, social organizations and other kinds of organizational e-commerce um, dues and newsletters and and um, you know all of that kind of stuff so so think of all of those modes of models of, of e-commerce and then multiply it by all the different categories of e-commerce and you can see that e-commerce is a, a hugely huge variety of, of possible endeavors so we've talked about e-commerce but let's talk about some of the things that support e-commerce that e-commerce uses to make e-commerce work well e-payments are, are an important part of of most e-commerce systems being able to take credit and debit cards, being able to take e-checks, being able to use a digital wallet, being able to um, ACH, which is transfer money to and from a checking account or savings account, even cryptocurrencies um, are a way for web services and e-commerce e websites, e-commerce sites, to uh, or business e-business. E to uh, transfer value back and forth. There are all kinds of services like Visa and MasterCard or or Venmo or PayPal and, and there are lots of others but, but those are kind of the biggies. Think that uh, e-commerce would be completely well difficult to use without uh, web marketing, without intelligent agents, without push technologies to deliver advertising and, and, and specials to your customers. Um, email marketing. Well, I mean, our email box is full of email marketing, and and a lot of it, you know, it goes right to spam. But there are some of the companies that I do business with on a regular basis that when I get an email from them, well, I open it up because 
you know, they might be having a sale on something I want, or they might send me a coupon which drives me out to their to their websites or drives me out to their store. So I mean that's that's kind of good sometimes. A uh, mobile marketing, um, in-app and in-game advertising, uh, QR codes, location awareness. Stop and think about. Um, do you have do you have um, an app that uh, like the I don't know Kroger app or the Lowe's app or or some other app for a retailer that you use on a somewhat regular basis? Well, do they know where you are? And you've given them permission probably to know where you are, and they're able to now target their advertising to you based upon location. Interesting. SMS, uh, short message service, sending text messages or multimedia messages, also part of the whole idea of mobile marketing. And uh, search engine or optimization, it's also abbreviated SEO, is the technique of using uh, words in your website and potentially paying search engines to have your pages appear higher in the rankings uh, SEO it's that's a there's their whole PhDs about just SEO and uh, but stop and think if a customer potential customer types in your product into Google or Bing or whatever search engine you're using and you're on top is there a chance they're just going to click on you and buy it from you and not look at your customer, uh, look at your competition who could be two or three or four down? Yeah, are they going to search for you if they don't know about you? Probably not. So, so these are all kinds of technologies that that help support um, that help support e-commerce. One of the supporting technologies that I didn't mention because it's just so important that I want to bring it onto its own slide is called social commerce. You know, stop and think about how much social media and social social contact in general drives all of commerce, but especially e-commerce. Influencers, posts and shares from friends, you know, star ratings. How many times do you go online and look for a product and you see 5,000 star, 5,000 people have given it stars and it's got a 4.8 stars out of 5. Holy crap, that's good, good stuff, right? Um, where if there are three reviews and they're tepid, eh, I'm not going to buy that crap. I'll buy something else. So, or I'll go to a different restaurant or I'll go to a different store or I'll go somewhere different because I don't know if uh, now maybe if there are only three reviews I'll give it a chance if there are a thousand reviews and the responses are tepid you know three two and a half I'm not gonna bother with that crap <laughs> um, so uh, um, you know stop and think about how social commerce is how it's done today absolutely how it's done today and it's going to be how it's done into the future I don't see how social commerce will ever ever not be used because we are our animals that that well, well we're herd animals aren't we and if uh, if if a thousand people have said it's good it's probably good um, now you know that several of those people are probably employees and, and are paid to make those claims and several of those people are are influencers that get some free crap for making those claims but several of those people are, are cut people just like you and me who uh, who like it or don't you got Facebook Instagram and Twitter and Groupon and Kickstarter and Etsy and eBay and Macari and Yelp and List and Urban Spoon and Google Business and I mean there are hundreds of, of these but uh, you know which ones do you use for making decisions about where you're going to spend your money where you're going to spend your time interesting question but social commerce really is one of those underlying technologies that truly drives e-commerce today 
in addition to social commerce, there's another kind of subset of social commerce that, that's called hypersocial commerce. Um, and hypersocial commerce is different because it makes you feel like you're part of a special club, like you're part of a special group, like you're part of a tribe. You belong to this group of special people. Um, stop and think about the way Apple markets its products. Once you become an Apple user, once you become an Apple owner, once you've got your Apple device, it's really hard to get you to ever leave Apple. Why? Because they've kind of got you into their tribe. You're one of their special people. Um, you know, and, and, and it's about humans, hopefully, in hypersocial comment commerce. And 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 the information is more and it's less formal and it's messy. Um, it's direct. It's blogs, it's YouTubes, it's influencers, it's member content. Um, you know, stop and think. I'm, I'm going to use an example. My wife um, is really big into into cosmetics. She absolutely loves small indie cosmetic companies, small independent cosmetic companies. She follows them um, on their Facebook. She follows them on Instagram. She watches them when they release things on on YouTube. She watches influencers that that are are. Uh, talking about and demonstrating and showing these these products from these independent manufacturers and uh, sometimes she'll even post back into the or back into the into the tribe back into the group about what she's experienced positive and minor, negative but usually positive and so this hyper social commerce is is again extremely targeted. It it brings members, like say the tribe members, the content, the profiles, and the transactions, the sales, but not only the sales, but the transactions of watching videos, the transactions of of responding, the transactions of liking, the transactions of of being part of of this special group that's that's tied around this one e-commerce website or around this one group of e-commerce products. Really a, a cool way um, that, that we're building an entirely new definition of society. We're building an entirely new definition of, of culture here by using these hypersocial uh, marketing and hypersocial commerce uh, tools. I think it's really cool, and 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 we will see this co continue to expand and continue to grow into the future. I'm sure. This concludes video eight in the information systems introduction series. I'm Jim Renault, a professor at Shawnee State University, and I'd like to say thank you for watching. You can contact me at jreno at shawnee.edu with any questions, issues, comments, or or other things. This presentation was copyright 2021-22 by me. All rights are reserved. Remember, be nice to animals. Uh, spay and neuter your cats and dogs. Uh, read the syllabus. Um, go to class. Um, ask questions. And contact your faculty whenever you have a question. Good night.